Good morning, I'm Major Betty Blair, and it's my honor to welcome you to the 2013 Tennessee Highway Patrol Memorial Service, where we honor the 41 members of the patrol who gave their lives for the citizens of Tennessee, the Tennessee Highway Patrol, and their fellow man. This is an especially difficult year for us with the loss of our brothers, Trooper Ronnie Hale, Trooper Michael Slagle, Sergeant Brian Boshears, and Dispatch Supervisor Michael Gladney. We are comforted with the knowledge that our dear friends rest in peace and in a place of honor. Please rise for the invocation given by retired Lieutenant Colonel Albert Strother and remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the Tennessee Highway Patrol Color Guard and the singing of our national anthem by Sergeant Jeff Webb. Please rise. Let us pray. Father God, we bow before your presence on this day, thanking you, O Master, for another opportunity to come before your presence. Even in the midst of rain, you're worthy to be praised. As we add two names to our list, we look to you, O Master, for you said in the word, lean not unto our own understanding, but in all your ways to acknowledge you, and you shall direct our path. We ask your blessings upon us, those that are present, the families of those who are departed. We thank you for the service that they rendered. But we ask your blessings on each agency, each family, and our great state, our leaders, these departments. So, Master, keep your hands around us. Bless our country in a mighty way. And to continue to guide us and lift us up in every leaning way, O oh Master. As we trust you, for you said you'd never leave us, nor would you ever forsake us. Now keep us in your care, O oh Master. This we ask in your Son Jesus' holy name and for his sake. Amen and amen. Advance the colors. <laughs> Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still. Say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Be seated. All right. Now it is my honor to introduce you to the commander 
of the Tennessee Highway Patrol, Colonel Tracy Trott. Good morning. Well, we work in the rain. We train in the rain. Today we're going to celebrate and mourn in the rain. It's an honor to welcome you here today to THP headquarters for the annual memorial ceremony where we honor the 41 state troopers who have died in the line of duty. It's a bittersweet day for us in the THP. We get to see old friends and colleagues, but we mourn and honor the names on the wall behind me who left us too soon. One name particular on that wall behind me is Trooper Douglas Tripp, killed in 1991 by multiple gunshot wounds. Doug was my roommate at the academy in 1978, so this ceremony has special meaning to me. Sadly, we have added two names since we met here a year ago. Trooper Ronnie Hale from the Cookville District, who died on July 6, 2012 from a heart attack during the middle of his shift. And Trooper Mike Slagle from the Knoxville District, who apparently suffered a heart attack and was involved in a crash on January 25th, 2013. I want to recognize family members. I know Ronnie Hale's uh, daughter and son are here today, Melissa and Dwayne. And I also want to recognize the other family members from Fallen Heroes. The Larkin family is sitting right up front. They're always here and we appreciate you so very much. I think it also bears mentioning that although these men died from medical issues, it is no less of a line of duty death for us. This profession that we have chosen puts an untold strain on the body's defense mechanisms. At times, stress over a long career overcomes your ability to survive. We honor Ronnie and Michael today as men who dedicated their life to the Tennessee Highway Patrol and made the ultimate sacrifice. I also want to mention, as Betty did, Supervisor, Dispatch Supervisor Michael Gladney from the Lawrenceburg District who died of a heart attack on October 8, 2012, and Sergeant Brian Boshears who died on April the 22nd, 2013 from complications of pneumonia. Although these are not classified as line of duty deaths, Michael and Brian were part of our family and we mourn their loss and honor their service today. I'd like to say a special welcome to a few of our guests that we have here today from the law enforcement community. Retired Chief Joe Casey from Metro PD, uh, Larry Hitchcock and Ralph Swift from the Retired Troopers Association, Dave, former commissioners Dave Mitchell, Denny King, Bill Jones, and Gerald Nicely. We're so proud and happy to have you all back here today. Uh, Keith Moses from the FBI, Kendall Poole from the Governor's Highway Safety, uh, office, John Deerberger from FMCSA, and Robert Weaver from the Nashville FOP. I know there's probably some people hidden under one of those umbrellas out there that I have missed, and I will apologize on the front end for that. It's also my honor to introduce most of the guests on stage here, and I'm going to start on my far left. Deputy Commissioner Larry Godwin is a 38-year veteran of the Memphis PD. He served seven years as Director of Police Services before his retirement. He created the data-driven approach called Blue Crush, which lowered crime rates 26% in Memphis. He has a BS degree from Liberty University and is a graduate of the FBI National Executive Institute. He was named Deputy Commissioner in 2011. Larry, thank you for your support. Next to Larry is Assistant Commissioner and Director of Homeland Security, David Perkey. David is a former state trooper, a former TBI agent, former accreditation manager for Morristown PD, and he was appointed County Mayor of Hamlin County in 1995 and elected to four consecutive terms before his appointment to the Department of Safety in 2011. David has a master's degree from University of Tennessee. David, as always, thank you for your support. The next two gentlemen, Commissioner Bill Gibbons and General Max Haston, you'll hear much more about in, in just a few minutes. On my right is Major Betty Blair. Betty is a 30-year veteran of the THP, the first female major in the history of the Highway Patrol, and serves as the executive officer in the Colonel's office. 
Betty is a graduate of Northwestern University School of Police Staff and Command and heads up our national and state accreditation process along with our staff inspection program. Next to Betty is retired Lieutenant Colonel Albert Strother. Albert joined the THP with me in 1978. He has served in training, executive service, capital security, and safety education. In 2006, Albert was appointed Lieutenant Colonel over Support Services Division and retired in 2008. He now serves as a community leader, a businessman, and a Methodist preacher. Next to Albert is Lieutenant Colonel Dean Hurley. Dean is a 36-year veteran of the THP who commands all the field operations for the Highway Patrol. He's a Johnson City native. He has a master's degree from ETSU, former captain of the Fall Branch District, and an adjunct professor at ETSU. And last but not least, Assistant Commissioner Lori Bullard, a 25-year veteran of the Memphis PD who retired and came to Nashville to work for the Department of Safety. She moved through the ranks of the Memphis PD and retired as a precinct commander at the rank of Colonel. She holds a master's degree from Union University and named assistant commissioner over driver services in 2011 by Commissioner Bill Gibbons. Now it's my honor to introduce the commissioner of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security, Bill Gibbons. Commissioner Gibbons was named to Governor Haslam's cabinet as he took office in 2011. Commissioner Gibbons received his undergraduate degree and law degree from Vanderbilt University before working as a policy advisor in the Governor Alexander administration. Governor, uh, Commissioner Gibbons has experience at all levels of government. He's been a county commissioner in Shelby County. He's been a city councilman in Memphis. He's been twice elected as state district attorney for Shelby County, serving 14 years before joining the cabinet. And he is married to a federal appeals judge, Julia Gibbons. He chairs the governor's sub-cabinet group for public safety, and he's made a difference everywhere he's ever served, and we are fortunate to have him as our commissioner. Please welcome the Honorable Commissioner Bill Gibbons. Thank you very much, Colonel Trott. We appreciate everyone being here under uh, some difficult weather conditions. Uh, I do want to recognize uh, the sister of Trooper Lynn Ross, who is also here. Uh, when Colonel Trott was mentioning the family members, I think uh, he did not spot her in the audience. So we appreciate uh, uh, your presence as well. Uh, I'm going to be brief uh, because you're standing in the rain and because my comments are in ink and it's beginning to, uh, the rain's beginning to affect it. I do want to recognize a number of my colleagues uh, in Governor Haslam's cabinet uh, who are here, and I apologize if I fail to see some of you because uh, with the umbrellas, uh, it's kind of hard to tell. But I know that uh, our Department of Transportation Commissioner John Schroer is here. I believe I saw Commissioner Grinder of Veterans Affairs, and I believe I saw Commissioner Schofield of the Department of Correction. I hope I did not overlook uh, anyone. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce the 75th Adjutant General of Tennessee, General Major General Max Haston. Uh, General Haston is responsible for the supervision of the Military Department of Tennessee that includes the Army National Guard, the Air National Guard, the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency, and the Tennessee State Guard. He is a native of McMinnville and currently splits his residence between Knoxville and Mount Juliet. He was commissioned as an armor officer in the U.S. Army in 1979 from Middle Tennessee State University after completing the armor officer basic course, course at Fort Knox. Uh, he was assigned uh, to the 1st Cavalry Division at Fort Hood as a tank platoon leader. During his time on active duty, General Haston, uh, in addition to his service as a tank platoon leader, uh, served as a company executive officer, support platoon leader, and Battalion S-4 with the 2nd Armored Division. Before his appointment, Major General Haston served as the Assistant Adjutant General, Army and Deputy Chief of Staff for Training and Operations for the Joint Forces Headquarters, Tennessee. In 1983, Major General Haston joined the Tennessee Army National Guard. Uh, he is a graduate of the U.S. Army College of War in Carlisle Barracks, Pennsylvania, 
where he received a master's degree in strategic studies. He has the distinction of being the seventh commander of the 278th Armored Cavalry Regiment. In May 2005, Major General Haston mobilized and deployed as the Chief Reserve Components Multinational Corps, Iraq 18th Airborne Corps. Uh, this department has a strong working relationship with General Haston. Uh, it is an honor for me to serve as his colleague in Governor Haslam's cabinet. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, General Max Haston. Hey, thank you, Commissioner Gibbons. Um, all the other commissioners that's here, Commissioner Grinder, Commissioner Shore. Um, I'm sure I'm going to miss somebody, Director Perky. But most of all, thank you for the troopers and the families of being here today. Um, and I'll say this to the cadets in the back, if it ain't raining, you ain't training. So just enjoy it. You know, the sudden appearance of a Tennessee state trooper can be the most welcome sight or the most unnerving sight that you'll ever see. If you're in an accident on the interstate or in the ditch somewhere and you see those blue lights come up, you, you have a, a, a sense of relief in your heart. But if you're driving down the interstate and you get a little too heavy in the right foot and you see them in your rear view mirror, that can kind of make your heart go up in your throat. I know that feeling. But all in sincerity, I'm humbled to be here today uh, to honor and remember our Tennessee State Troopers. Those that currently serve, those that have served in the past, and those that make the ultimate sacrifice in defending and protecting the citizens of Tennessee. Law enforcement is not an easy job, and too often you're on a thin line between good and evil. Too often you're called upon to make tough choices while remembering your training and what drives you as a law officer. Police work is not a job, it is an absolute calling. When I started putting these remarks together, I wanted to celebrate the service and sacrifice of the troopers that we honor here today. And, and as I did that, I did, I did a lot of history searching on the Tennessee Highway Patrol. And I came across the Troopers' Creed. And this is the first time that I had read it, and I must say it's, a, it's an extremely powerful statement. And I'm going to read it, and I know you're sitting there thinking, hurry up, but I think this is very important. I'm a Tennessee State Trooper. I am a servant of the people and a member of a professional team. I am held to a higher standard. I am sworn to uphold the Constitution of the United States and the state of Tennessee, to protect the innocent, the weak, and the peaceful, and to respect the rights of all citizens to liberty, equality, and justice. I will never allow my integrity to be questioned, always doing what is right, legally and morally. I will serve with loyalty to this state, its citizens, the Highway Patrol, and my fellow troopers. And I will never bring shame or reproach upon my badge or the uniform I wear. I will perform my duty with honor and make the trooper values part of my daily life and character. I wear this badge and uniform with pride, for I know that many are called, but few are chosen, and stand ready to say, here I am, send me, for I'm a Tennessee State Trooper. These are very strong words, ideals not unlike the Army and the Air Force creeds ingrained in our soldiers and airmen in the military department. This proud organization, and I am so honored to be here today. As I said, I did a little history search on the Tennessee Highway Patrol. You came into existence on December the 14th, 1929 to replace the controversial Tennessee State Police Force, which had been created in 1926. In 1930, 55 officers were selected to begin patrolling Tennessee highways. The primary focus of this new state law enforcement agency was to protect, not prosecute, law-abiding motorists. The Tennessee Highway Patrol was formed to enforce the traffic and revenue laws with courtesy and professionalism. The first patrolman that was selected in 1930 was a decorated World War I veteran. Sergeant John L. Sullivan. In 1939, the General Assembly established the Tennessee Department of Safety to exercise authority over the Highway Patrol. And as more vehicles took to the highway, the demands to make our roads safer and, and enforce the law became an increased necessity. Automobiles and motorcycles have been the mainstay of our state troopers for many years, but they've had many, many changes over the years. 
Motorcycles were used as early as 1928, and one of the early motorcycle patrolmen was a fairly large man, I learned by the name of Greg O'Rear. Later, O'Rear became the Chief of Highway Patrol and the Commissioner of the Department of Safety under the former Governor Buford Ellington. And one of the stories that, that circulated around about, um, about Commissioner O'Rear was when Governor Prentice Cooper asked him, and, and O'Rear, as I understand, was nearly seven foot tall and weighed almost 400 pounds, and he was asked by the governor if he thought that he could, could ride a motorcycle, and he said, and I'll quote this, it says, I think so, Governor, but if I can't, I'll tote it under my arm. And apparently he was big enough to do it. I'll speak more about him in just a second. And motorcycles continued to be part of the, of the organization. And there was an elite unit formed, and I never knew this, but it was called the Yellow Jackets. And it was an all-volunteer force that was formed up in about 1958. And they got their name from wearing these Yellow Jackets that had a ye word Yellow Jacket put on it, and it had the, the Tennessee Highway Patrol patch also on it. They only got to exist about six months, but they continued to wear the, the, the special uniforms and ride the, the yellow motorcycles for, for a number of years. And at the time, I understand that the motorcycle patrolmen would patrol up till dark, and then they would come off the back roads and then patrol the main highways near town. And they found very quickly that chasing a speeding motorist on the gravel road was not a very safe event on a motorcycle. But on a more serious note, the, four fatal the first four fatalities of Tennessee state troopers happened on motorcycles. A total of 13 highway patrolmen uh, have been killed over the years and lost their lives in motorcycle accidents. From Trooper Charles Hash in 1930 to Trooper Andy Wall, who was escorting the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds in 2011. You know, from the beginning of the Tennessee Highway Patrol, there's been a kindred spirit between the Highway Patrol and the military department, as both of our members work very closely together in numerous scenarios. We kind of sort of have the same mission to protect and serve the citizens of Tennessee. And I have served with several highway patrolmen who and state troopers who were members of the Tennessee National Guard. Clois Brown, Billy Ford, Mason Black, Bill Sewell, Bill Nims, and most recently Chris Ray, and a guy that's on my personal staff and that is standing here in the honor guard today, Trooper Roy Brown. They're all consummate professionals in what they do, both as Tennessee State Troopers and as National Guard soldiers. A few months ago, I was home, I live in Knoxville, and I saw a documentary on PBS, and it was talking about Clinton up in Anderson County. And in 1956, a situation that took place up there where the desegregation of the schools was beginning to start. I remember my dad telling me stories when he was in the National Guard in Sparta, Tennessee, and they drove tank, he drove a tank from Sparta to Clinton, Tennessee, uh, to assist the highway patrol and the local officials up there. They were called out by Governor Frank Clement. And troopers and guardsmen worked hand in hand to ensure that the Clinton 12 could attend classes by going to Clinton High School. And the first, one of the first public schools that in the southeast to desegregate. As the riot was beginning to get out of hand, there was a highway patrol cruiser pulled up and a large man unfolded out of it by the name of Greg O'Rear. And the riders just seemed to go away. In 1968, state troopers and soldiers again worked hand in hand throughout the state after the brutal assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. Troopers and guardsmen in Memphis combined with local police forces to bring order to a very volatile situation. Whether it's through tornadoes, ice storms, flooding, civil disturbance, battles against the illicit drug problem that we have here in Tennessee, the Tennessee Military Department and the Tennessee Highway Patrol and our state troopers have formed a alliance of well-being for our citizens. The Tennessee Highway Patrol has had a long distinguished history and during the 74 years that the Highway Patrol was formed, it's developed a multifaceted agency. You handle not only law enforcement, but safety, education, service to motorists. Both of our agencies uphold proud creeds that reinforce a distinct moral code of conduct that we perform to each day. The creed and values it embodies helps us get us through some pretty tough times. You're often faced with tragedy, dealing with injuries and loss of life in Tennessee highways, and that's one of the most difficult things that troopers have to do. Too often you have to do that. You do it with professionally, dignity, and honor. 
Last year, I watched the information signs that Commissioner Shores put up across the state, and it shows the number of deaths on Tennessee highways. And it's a very sobering reminder. I, make, I should make each one of us to begin to drive a little more defensively, slow down and pay attention and, and enjoy our lives. The first President Bush stated in 1991 at the dedication of the National Law Enforcement Officer Memorial, and what he said was, they devoted themselves to timeless values that society shares. I may get ready to be elected. They valued peace, the peace of a civilized community that protects children at play, families at home, and storekeepers at work. They value human life so much that they were prepared to give their lives to protect it. And that value still stands today among the troopers of the Tennessee Highway Patrol, whose men and women serve a solemn dedication to an awful and thankless job, lengthy hours, and extensive miles. A total of 41 Tennessee state troopers have died in service since 1930 five of those since 2010. And it's fitting and right that we take time to remember those who have fallen and those who have served. On May 18, 1963, 53, uh, excuse me, 50 years ago this week, President Kennedy spoke at Vanderbilt University and famously stated, the obligation of every citizen in a free and peaceful society knows that only and respect for the law makes it possible for free men to dwell together in peace and in progress. He knows that the law is an adhesive force in the cement of society, creating out of chaos a coherence in a place of anarchy. Certain other societies may respect the rule of force, but we respect the rule of law. The troopers standing here today remember that every day you put on the uniform, you hug your family goodbye and you walk out the door. You do so knowing that you might be called upon that day to step between good and evil and at great personal risk. The, the citizens of Tennessee owe you a debt of gratitude that can never be fully repaid. It's a true honor to be here today and serve with you. I'm sorry it's pouring the rain, but we're all together and that's what matters. God bless you and your families, the great state of Tennessee, and I'll see you on the high ground. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now conduct the roll call for our fallen heroes. We request family members who are present to please stand when your loved one's name is called. Tripper Charles Hash. Tripper Walter Jones. Tripper Lee Loveless. Trooper Clovis Cole. Trooper Ed Kennedy. Oliver D. Williamson. Trick 
Tripper Oscar Morris. Tripper Lewis Raymond Hendon. Michael Rector, Trooper Douglas Tripp, Trooper George Holcomb, Sergeant James Carey, Association of State Troopers. The second brief represents the retired Tennessee Highway Patrol Troopers Association. And the third brief represents the Tennessee Highway Patrol.
company of the Holy Spirit be with these families. Speak to them, lift them up in every way. Now let your peace that surpasses all understanding. Let it rest, rule, and abide with us as for now and forever, Lord. It's in your Son Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Honor guard, retire with the focus. Oh, word. Freeze it! Or